Thank you. Thank you. Thank you so much. From yeshiva to the dentist. Okay. You go. <laughs> if you need any sort of contractor, I've got them. That's great. Happy, happy. I've never heard of this firm. It's mine. There you go. Oh, what Firms. a nice car. Yeah. I designed it. What all of Southern California, pretty much. Um, I do real estate and property management. So. Commercial? Uh, residential. Okay. Maybe, but I used to do commercial stuff. Givald, Givald. So, sitting in the chair, I just got a little work done, and I thought, wow, what is it that, uh, from yeshiva to the dentist, what, what's the connection, what's the makeshet, what's the shaykhis? So, many amazing uh, thoughts. You could ask the dentist, the professional, where she went to school, what she studied, the different types of professional practices in, in dental and I found uh, and then they the, if you're not uh, comfortable it's it's their problem there's no cognitive dissonance you know where you where, you, where you're not comfortable and it, and you're, you're you're supposed to pretend you're happy in yeshiva if you're not happy you're not supposed to say you're not happy it's not respectful when you leave the yeshiva if life is not treating you well because you feel like you weren't prepared or educated, you're not supposed to go back to the yeshiva and tell the rabbi, you told me a bunch of nonsense, it's not working. And, hi. Hi, how are you? Very good. And if, uh, and you can ask them where they went to school, you can ask them about what they're putting in your mouth, what they're giving you, and then the people, is a hierarchy, someone walks in and says, I'm not the doctor, but I could do this, I'm qualified to do this. In yeshiva, the rabbi doesn't say, I'm not a philosopher, but I heard that I can quote this philosopher that said this. They give it to you, and you're supposed to take it on faith. And uh, if they're underqualified, uh, you're not supposed to ask. The, the bashful cannot learn, and the person who's not patient can't teach. So, bashful for what? There's no such a thing as a dumb question. There's no such a thing as an insolent question. Every question is important. But you may be shamed for asking some questions, and that's wrong. And I thanked the hygienist for the work. I said, thank you so much, because she was very patient, making sure that my bite is exactly and even. And she said to me, I always had a passion for this job. I always wanted to do this. In yeshiva, the rabbi won't say, I always wanted to be a teacher. I really wanted to teach because, wow, that's the stuff that she put in. It's a, like a cement. And so she said, ah. I always wanted to do it in yeshiva. If the rabbi always wanted to teach, then he wouldn't be upset at the questions, especially the real good ones. And last, and last, I asked her if this temporary, it's only for 10 days, so if it's not exactly perfectly done and adjusted for my bite, it's not so bad, right? I'll be okay, I could eat still for 10 days. And she said, yeah. In yeshiva, if you're spending four years, you need to know that this is supposed to be temporary. It's your education. And if what you're taught is not going to prepare you for the world, and it's not going to be accurate, and it's just based on faith and belief, it might not be a good idea. You want something more mathematically correct, or based mathematically and philosophically correct, in order for it to be, to stand up to the test of something that's supposed to be permanent. It's your education. It's who you are. It's how you think. Thank you for watching.